right there, guys. Daniel, an accidental login. If you, if you try to see where I am right now, this is mile end. I accidentally came through here with this bus a couple of days ago, and you're going to see what I saw last time. And this is how I imagine a green London. It's already happening. Oh, you can see. Yep. All the lights. Yeah, I'll try to zoom on it. Public lights. Street lights are. Where is it? They have. Little wind turbines. Wind turbines and solar panels on them. And you can see that little church over the over this little green hill. Well, this is not a green hill. Check this out. Oh, what it is, this is actually a green bridge over the stinky traffic road. And on the other side is the same. It's a bit reflecting from the bus. But all that's happening here is uh, they've created a, some kind of landscape, how London used to be probably around here, and uh, implemented it on the, the traffic. So this is sustainable uh, green architecture, landscaping. I think I'll come back here and uh, make a few interviews with the people who designed this. I don't know if Sean Barry can see this. She's the only candidate that can understand what I'm talking about for the mayor elections. Because London is getting uglier and uglier and more unsustainable by the minute. It's pretty much having the second blitz. Everything is coming down. If you've seen the West End of the State um, portrait film on BBC yesterday, it was kind of weird looking back at it, how it started. Yeah, I think we're going to pass another little eco um, center of some sort, another place that we should visit. By the way, uh, from the hive, we're going to launch you know, the hive in Dalston where the cabaret, the Solutions Cabaret, is going to be on the 25th. Uh, we're going to launch a new internet based TV station called Solutions Zone TV. Uh, that will give me the, the perfect excuse to go and um, interview these architects and people who've made these. I think if I come at them as as I am now, as, as Occupy News Network, they would freak out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, i never done a live streaming on a bus before, but... You know, there's the first time for everything. But I must come back here and... And record this, I guess you'll see the... Yeah, you can't see much of it, so... Uh, yeah, I have to take a few clean shots here, once I'm back around here. But it's very impressive. It's, it's a hill from both sides. You can see a hill with a with a little church on it. And the church is not on the hill, and it's not a hill. It, it's a it's a little flyover, uh, a green bridge above a very busy, disgusting London road with buses and lorries going through. And you can't really see any of it from from the right angles, from most angles actually. Unless you're traveling on the in the middle of the road, just a little seat before I forget to come back here. It's striking because I've been talking about this, and not just me, of course. People who are trying to imagine a, a more sustainable, greener London, which is pretty much possible. Uh, it's it's only been kind of theoretical, and and this part of London which is called Mile End, has gone there recently, because I don't think this is, this is an old development. I've been around here years ago, and 
never seen this. So apparently it's already kind of happening, so I think if we track down the people who made this, they could, with the right type of protest, we could uh, get this kind of stuff happening. Oh, there you go, community garden, growing food. So this looks like some kind of a transition town projects I've seen in other places in Europe. Not really in London, usually. I've seen individual projects, but the whole area is kind of green and sustainable looking. Even knocking down buildings is already costing the earth. Another green. It's very, very green. And that building looks disgusting, but it reminds me of the other green building. This, this is not really architecture, but there is a similar building in Germany that runs on algae. So, there you go, another little park. And there's going to be some kind of an eco center here. But if you look at What's behind is it's just crazy, these, these towers growing out of the ground every day, another tower block. And I've heard somewhere that uh, only like 15% of these developments in London actually use architects. So it's just idiots creating 3D models and that's why these Two things seven, look seven. like unrendered 3D Three. models most of the time. Okay, let's take a look at the messages. Uh, budget today, more half for the oil industry. Yes, I've seen it. Oh, look at that. Oh, it says ecology, ecology pavilion. I, I wouldn't fucking dream of this that London has such a thing. And it's here, so I don't know what happened in my land, but some kind of green, green boom just happened. And it must have been recently because I haven't heard of this and I've never seen anything like that. It looks like it's embedded into the little mound. It's a little mound and uh, this ecology center is, is inside. So I have to come back and investigate. But maybe we could spread this a bit faster than I thought around London. Because we've been fighting against the monster for for ages but you know this this year is for me at least is the, the year of solutions and we have to find what we're fighting for I'm fighting for life on earth that we're systematically killing right now with the system we're living in the system that's been forced on us to live in uh, and it's a crime to a crime against life on this planet to take part in this system so we have to we have to fight for something better and what is better than sustainable green livable future on on planet earth and it's not really future anymore it's we have the technology we have everything to, to make it a reality before we run out of water before we run out of oxygen and so on and we run out of species around us that are you know uh, that are keeping us alive as well yeah so it's it's pretty sad that everything is getting privatized but i think it's the end of countries anyway one way or another but we, we can't really let the corporate world privatize everything and, and create this horrible dystopian future that sci-fi writers of all ages warned us about it's all happening but if we do decentralize the power and, and create oops oops just a sec a solar panels on the bus stop. 
so this is already reality and this is England so you know we know that they're against solar energy and renewables and they're into fracking and stuff but these are still solar panels on a bus stop it's not yeah so something is happening that's why I hashtag the uh, sustainable investors the green green investor people who are actually scared of uh, what's happening on the planet and they want to fight climate change with their money. Well, this is the time to drop out the middleman, the politician, and have a, some kind of a contract between the people and, and the investors. So, and as I was saying before, if we de decentralize and create smaller communities that we can actually run ourselves locally, you know, think globally, act locally, then we should be all right. That's, that would be transparent, direct, democratic, and, or, or whatever, you know, you, you can run your community any, any way you want if it's working, and if it's not working, it will be sorted out because it's, it's pretty much, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you can't avoid confrontation if, if you if you're running your community locally with the ops more solar panels yeah East London is is coming up nicely greener so if if, if you're running your um, local community as a local person everyone works or lives or both locally then it's accountable. You know, giving, giving power and giving, surrendering your uh, responsibilities to people you don't even know, and also who don't know you, is just absurd. Especially when those people are living far away from you and have nothing to do with you. I, I have no idea how we ended up with this system. Oops, the stream health is acting up. Yeah, I'll finish on that note. I think I'm coming out of the, the green zone, <laughs> sadly. I'm on my way uh, Two, seven, seven. back into the heart Two. of the beast. I agree and <laughs> um, 16th of April. Yeah, it is time to hit the streets in the thousands, but it's it's kind of happening every every time people get angry. Uh, I can recommend for the people who've already been protesting to to change their way of protest. Like find your affinity groups, find your, the people you actually trust, and do actions with them. Don't even tell anyone what you're doing. Maybe start live streaming once you're once you're at it or. Once you have a message or once you run into some kind of resistance when Babylon tries to tries to fight you then it's time to go public. But the best way to do actions is, is with a small group of people that you trust. That marches show power, which is very good. And it shows the number of people who don't like what's happening, but to actually make change happen you need people you trust and people you can work with that's the other thing because if everyone is rowing in different directions then the boat will just spin around and, and sink after a while but you know if you if you find people you can work your dynamics out and and have your goals ready then it can work that's how i'm doing it as well and um if thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of people are taking action to create a better world now, then it will be an interesting future. I think this year will be the year of solutions, and next year we'll be working hard on those solutions. If we don't do that, then we're pretty much looking forward to a very horrible dystopian future, including extinction of most of the species of the planet, including our own. So, 
I I don't really want to do that. <laughs> don't know about you, but uh, I would try. Even if we do go extinct, I would try to to live a, a fair, sustainable, livable world. Yeah. So I'm back in Bobby London. Already traffic jams on the way, and I'm losing the battery on the phone. So. I think I'm going offline now. Ah, Cambridge. Yeah, I might go to Cambridge actually. I've never been to Cambridge to visit uh, friends and see what's going on. Oh, and by the way, uh, transport is key, like for, for my work, absolutely. So anyone who knows how to, or anyone wants to work on, on some kind of a uh, transport solution for for activism preferably or not just even preferably but we need something that doesn't run on petrol or that something that we can turn into something that runs an alternative um, anything but anything but petrol uh, like the pool bus for example between Bath and Bristol that's running on human shit uh, or you know solar panels or, or wind or solar and wind or even if we have to pedal it ourselves almost like the Flintstones it's good enough for me but I I never used anything that runs on petrol and, and I don't want to start now so anything as a van or a or a minibus some kind of contraption that we can run on, on something alternative then then uh, we can be mobile finally and and that would help a lot to connect the little nodes in the network that's already set up since Occupy. Right, so. Okay, come to London and let's meet up, guys, and work something out. There needs to be a strategy. We just we can't just march march back and forth and and shout. That's, that's not gonna change anything. And remember, never protest the same way twice. Because they will adapt like a Borg in Star Trek. <laughs> okay, so that's that's me saying goodbye. In the belly of the beast in London. So Daniel from Occupy News Network logging out. Ciao ciao.